Hello everyone. In this video, we will try to show you the indeterminacy of infinity divided by infinity in five questions. The questions we selected are the ones where the most mistakes are made, and we tried to solve them in the most instructive way possible. I hope you find it helpful. Enjoy watching. In question one, we have an expression yielding the indeterminate form of infinity divided by infinity as x approaches negative infinity. The most common mistake in this question is focusing on the x in the numerator and the 2x in the denominator, leading to the answer of 1 divided by 2. Actually, you need to do it this way. I'm factoring out x squared from inside the square root. Inside the square root, I have 4 in the x squared factor. Minus your whole life divided by x. Plus, I wrote it as 1 divided by x squared. Dead. 2x plus said that. When taking this, that x squared out, one of the mistakes made is to directly accept it as x. Here, you definitely need to say absolute value of x. The reason we chose to let x approach negative infinity in the question is this. To be able to show you this, I will explain the difference again shortly. Inside the square root, 4 minus 5 divided by x plus 1 divided by x squared divided by, and below we have, it became 2x plus 7. Now, friends, here, why is absolute value important? If x were to approach infinity, e, yes, you would find the same result without taking the absolute value. However, as it approaches negative infinity, since x is a negative value, it comes out of the absolute value as negative x. In this case, kiko plus x inside the square root, it will be 4 minus 5 divided by x plus 1 divided by x squared. The bottom is also 2x plus 7. Factoring x out from the top. 1 plus the square root of ball minus 5 divided by x. I wrote it as plus 1 divided by x squared. I wrote the bottom part as x times 2 plus 7 divided by x. I simplified these x's. Now, when you take the limit of this expression as x approaches infinity at the top, uh, plus now the square root of 4, since 5 divided by infinity will be 0, this part goes away. Since 1 divided by infinity will be 0, this part goes away. So, this part. Only the square root of 4 remains. Divided. Similarly, at the bottom, it's also 2. Since 7 divided by x will also be 0, that part goes away. So only 2 remains. From here, 1 plus 2 divided by o, 2. So the answer to the question would be 3 divided by 2. So. Do we always have to solve a test question this long? No. Let's take the question from the top again. The expression with the greatest power above is x. And inside the square root, there's the square root of 4x squared. Let me take this out directly as the absolute value of 2x. -y. There's also 2x at the bottom. The absolute value of 2x as x approaches negative infinity is negative, so it comes out as 2x. So x, it becomes negative, negative 2x divided by 2x. This 2, 3x, no, divided by 2x. I simplified the x's. It becomes 3 divided by 2. I think this is the method you should use in the test. 
The second question is, as x approaches infinity, a question involving exponential functions has been given, and an indeterminate form of infinity over infinity has been created. Here as well. It's enough to focus on the dominant terms again. So it looked up. It's 2 times 5 to the power of x plus 2 below. It's minus 4 times 5 to the power of x. I'm not forgetting to take the negative in front. So it's enough to focus on 2 times 5 to the power of x plus 2 over minus 4 times 5 to the power of x. Here, this plus 2 is very important because while I was solving this question, I need to separate it like this. To find the real coefficient, this is 25. I had a factor of 2 in front. So it's 50 times 5 to the power of x divided by minus 4 times 5 to the power of x. I simplify the 5 to the power of x minus 25. I found the answer to be 2. So why can I only focus on 5 to the power of x here? Let's briefly show this only in the upper part. For example, if I took 5 to the power of x out as a factor up, it would be 2 times 5 to the power of 2. Here, plus 4 times. It would be 3 divided by 5 power x. Let's quickly do it below. When I took 5 to the power of x out as a factor, 8 times 4, 4 to the power of 3 times 4 divided by 5 to the power of x. It would be minus 4. When you simplify the 5 to the power of x and take the limit, as x approaches infinity, the simple fractions approach 0. That's why this part is 0. In the same way, this part would also be 0. So it would be 2 times 5 to the power of 2 divided by minus 4. Or it would be 50 divided by minus 4. Or it would be minus 25 divided by 2. So it would turn out to be the same as the first answer I found. Question 3. This one is similar to question 2. A question that involves the use of exponential functions, creating an infinite division and infinite uncertainty. The most common mistake here is for a student who is used to the previous question to focus on 3 raised to the power of x. But if you pay attention, in the expressions with 2, it's not x, but 2x that is present. 2 raised to the power of 2x is actually 2 raised to the power of x squared. So it's actually not dependent on 2, but there is an exponential function that is dependent on 4. In that case, the question, let's turn it into its real form. Since this is 4 raised to the power of x, we have 8 times 4 raised to the power of x plus. 7 times 3 raised to the power of x plus 5. Section. 6 times 3 raised to the power of x plus 1 minus. Let's first think of this as 2 raised to the power of 4 to x times 2 raised to the power of we de e 1. So it's 2 times 4 raised to the power of x. I can use the logic from the previous question right now. I can use that logic. I need to do something like this. I'm focusing directly on the 4 raised to the power of x because they are larger. So 8 times 4 raised to the power of x is on top negative 2 times 4 raised to the power of x is also at the bottom. I took these from here. I found the answer to the question to be negative 4. Our fourth question is again a problem that uses exponential functions. 
When you think like the second question, you can focus on e to the power of x. But if you pay attention, x is approaching negative infinity. In this case, the strongest expression is not e to the x, but e to the minus x. Because when you replace x with negative infinity, this is going to be e to the infinity. And this is going to be e to the negative infinity. In this question, if you pay attention to this, my strong terms will be 3 times e to the power of negative x and negative e to the power of negative x. When you simplify e to the power of negative x, the answer is negative 3 from 3 divided by negative 1. It would be 3 in question 5. It has given us functions of different types and created the indeterminate form of infinity divided by infinity with them. If there are different types of functions, you definitely need to know the hierarchy. First of all, which functions are stronger than the others in the hierarchy? Let's write down what they are. Functions are strongest when the power of the function is also written as a function, that is, functions like x to the x r power. After that, factorial expressions come next. After that, we have exponential functions. After that, we have polynomial functions. Then logarithmic. After that, trigonometric. Expressions like sine and cosine come next. If we approach accordingly, 2 to the x power above is exponential. Since x factorial is an expression that has a factorial, I need to give priority to my x factorial. Below, x cubed is a polynomial. x to the power of x is the type of function that sits at the very top of the hierarchy. That's why I need to take this. Here too, friends, the hierarchy continues when you take the limit as x approaches infinity. So, x to the power of x. Since x factorial is strong, you can actually think of the top as a number while the bottom is like an expression with an x. In this case, since it's a number divided by infinity as x approaches, infinity, the answer comes out to be zero. If the situation were reversed, that is, um, as the limit, approaches x to infinity. The expression x to the power of x is a factor above. If the local expression were below, then I would think of it as x divided by a number. From here, my answer would have been infinity. Of course, here, the sign of the number c is also important. If c is greater than zero, then it's infinity. c, if it's less than zero, then it would approach negative infinity.